Hey, welcome everybody to another session of Beyond the Title, where we speak with exceptional uh, professionals with extraordinary experiences. Joining us today is Ponchi Neok, the general manager of e-commerce at uh, Body Shop Indonesia. Welcome, Ponchi. How are you doing? Hi, Steve. I'm doing great. Thanks. Thanks for having me here. Oh, it's it's brilliant to have you. And of course, you know, because we are doing this virtually, I'm I get to travel around the world with our lovely guests. So, where are you right now? I'm currently based in Assam. It's a it's a state in India, but for the work wise, I've been based in Indonesia for the last three years now. Oh, awesome! Wow. Uh, how, how is Assam and Indonesia's experience that you've been taking over for the last few years now? Well, in terms of countries, I don't see too much difference. It's more or less the same. Um, same pollution, same traffic. But I think in terms of living in a different culture, I think it's quite different experience to be living in uh, Indonesia compared to India, where you have so many different religions, different castes and different communities, right? But I think it's more unified in Indonesia. So I think that way it's a bit different. Awesome. Awesome. Hey, so so let's get to know you a bit better, right? And my first question to all my lovely guests is, what is that thing that, that drives you out of bed every morning? What is your ikigai? Well, I think if you have to put in literal terms, what drives me out of the bed, I think nothing would drive me out of bed, right? Because I'm late. <laughs> I'm a late riser. But I think in terms of mining the purpose and the meaning of life, I think it took quite a long time for me to actually find out what's the real thing I really value. I think a lot of us today, I think we, you know, battle with the thoughts, like we think the purpose is life is to get up, go to work and earn money, right? But that doesn't give you the peace of mind. But I think for me, I figured out that um, maybe helping people really makes me at peace, you know, and content. And when I say helping people, it's not necessarily doing some charity or donations or stuff like that. Um, small things, maybe, you know, you just giving someone a voice to speak, helping someone to have a better life, you know, um, you know, helping with the small things, but it really gives you, um, you know, satisfaction in your mind, right? So that's, that's the mission in my life. But I think what I really want to do um, and figure out, like, you know, this is where I want to be, my have my mission. So it's like helping small kids, you know, uh, I think if everyone, each of one of us can to uh, contribute to help a life of a kid, I think the world would be definitely a better place. So definitely my mission in my life would be adopting a kid or giving a kid a better yeah. life someday, I wish. God bless. Yeah. Any organizations you work with right now? Sorry? Any organizations yeah. you work with right now? Um, not in Indonesia, but I do contribute to the organizations in India. Uh, I was also part of a blind school, which was in Delhi. So, um, so yeah, yeah. And I think I'm right now being with Body Shop. I'm in a very right place because Body Shop values are that contribute to the society, contribute to the environment. So that's a perfect place for me. Yeah. Hey, you know, speaking of that, uh, what we started doing, you know, way back when Insiders started, one of the the ethos that Insiders also worked with is to help you know, uh, extended hand of, of, of uh, development, skills education, and empowerment to people from minorities, right? Uh, and people yeah. who have little. Uh, we do work with a lovely organization called care.org, uh, where we are trying to, to touch the lives of a million plus uh, women and children, both at, uh, you know, both who are in the at-risk communities and a lot of the work that goes in between that. I'm going to connect with you just afterwards so I can, I can uh, you know, share a few ideas with you and learn from you on some things that you are doing through Body Shop, but also directly to influence and, and, and impact the uh, lives of these kids. Awesome. That hey, I love this out already. Yeah. Uh, so if life were a movie, uh, and I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm waiting for you to tell me the answer to this. If life were a movie, what character would you love to play? Well, I actually thought about it and I think there would be two different versions of my movie if I have to put it in my life, you know. <laughs> uh, the movie that I want to live my life and, and the movie where I want to uh, live a life like how I want to die, you know. So there's yeah. two different uh, movie I would uh, picture out. I think uh, if I have to put my life in terms of a movie, I think uh, one of the movie, uh, not movie actually, that's a series, uh, that really inspired me was the Queen's Gambit. 
Uh, I'm pretty sure you must have heard and seen that. <laughs> yeah. uh, I think that it was an exceptionally uh, fictional story, but it was very exceptionally well designed and well portrayed. Um, how uh, Elizabeth, you know, self discover her hidden talent and just not, ex uh, you know, exploring the hidden talent, but how she battled through the rivalries, the, the gatekeepers, the bullies, uh, and then became the victory, um, breaking the stereotypes, you know, uh, and being the woman leader of the chess game, okay, right? So that's very inspirational. Yeah. So if I have to live my life, I mean, that's where I imagine, right? That's how I want to be, and that's where, how I am. So it's very, like, um, inspirational for me. Um, since I'm from India, and I'm, I'll, I'm a movie buff, <laughs> Bollywood, uh, there was one uh, movie which was, uh, I'm, I'm not sure you have heard about Nirja Bhanot. Uh, it's a movie called Nirja based on this uh, real life uh, story of Nirja Bhanot, which was an, um, she was an uh, air hostess, which saved a lot of lives, uh, the kids' lives. She saved three uh, life of uh, kids uh, when the plane was hijacked by Pakistan in the Pakistan when there was a stoop over. Yeah. Um, so that was quite inspirational for me because for someone to think in the last few moments um, to save someone's life uh, instead of saving your own life, that's a really incredibly brave, brave thing. So I think if, uh, you know, that's if I, I mean, since I like to love help people, so maybe that would be my last moments. If there's ever one, then I would be like, you know, helping someone and doing the same thing. Yeah. I'm praying that every one of us gets a chance to to impact as well as help, uh, yeah. especially the kids. You know, our our next generation are the kids, uh, and to be able to to mold that that lovely mind to love to to cherish and also to accept, uh, I think is is the best gift you can give to any child. Awesome. Uh, speaking of children, what th this being the month of uh, of women, right? It's not just a Women's Day, but it's a Women's Month. What um, advice would you give the young professionals that you see coming out, uh, you know, of the next generation? Well, I think um, for the next generations, right? I think uh, we uh, we see a lot of um, we don't see a stability in this generation, you know, uh, because we are so much running behind the financial satisfaction. We don't see a stability. I think my advice to the next generation is to be more, um, learn as much as you can in your early experiences. Don't be, don't look after the financial side, but learn as much as you can, because that's going to be your molding path to your career. So, and that's when you find, you find the, uh, the real understanding of, you know, you may be in e-commerce or you may be in operations, retail or whatever, but once you can grasp, and once you can learn the core competencies, that's what would help you to mold your career. So I think that would be my advice. Don't look for financial gains, but look for more learnings, more knowledge. And knowledge is always a power, right? So, yeah. Exactly. Do you, do you find um, young professionals are a bit more afraid to ask the tough questions or afraid to just ask questions to learn? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, like, uh, uh, this is quite, uh, I often experience this inside my team as well, right? A lot of people don't ask questions, you know, and I have to really push them really hard. Like, please ask questions because more you ask questions, the more you know about, you know, things and then your more strategies comes out of that. So I think asking questions, I think there might be a certain kind of, uh, you know, it also depends, right, whom you're engaging with. If the other side of the person is not more approachable, then maybe the other side might be not feeling comfortable. So I think it's both the parties, how the equation is, how you break the icebreaker has to be there. Uh, yeah, so I think a lot of factors actually depends on that. So, but I think definitely I feel a lot of kids these days or generations these days hesitate to ask questions. And I think a lot of, uh, the, I think a lot of time people think that maybe uh, I would just rather do this and prove myself. And maybe I can just, you know, instead of, you know, skipping that process of, questioning someone and just prove it myself but that doesn't work that doesn't happen that way you know you have to understand True. and then you have to you know uh build the thing so yeah definitely asking question helps awesome awesome um in this really really 
fast-paced life right now that we live in, right? Where there's this, this uh, it, it's hard to differentiate between the, uh, between where you start working and where you stop working, where life begins in this case. How are you keeping yourself more sane and structured? What's, what, what are the apps that, you know, come first to mind that you have to actually have it every single day? Well, I think, and like I say, this is a really tough question for me to actually figure out which which app, but because, you know, everything has become so, everything in life today has become on the fingertips, right? <laughs> so even structure and sanity has become on your fingertips now. Um, so, but I think the, if I have to say, put it into apps, then I think the one app that makes my life more structured is definitely my calendar not just because i don't do anything in google calendar so it has to be outlook calendar so that's the life i'm the the moment i wake up i go to my directly to my calendar to plan out the rest of the, my day of my life i'm um, there right um so that's one definitely keeps me structured but i have to tell you about the sanity i think a little dose of music every day keeps me sane so definitely the spotify and the, the radio app that i have in my phone uh, even while doing work or like, you know, having this moment of break, um, you just, you know, have this moment of music there and like, you know, helps you to release your cortisols and stress and the work related stress and everything. So definitely those two apps. Yeah. Any artists you actually follow quite a bit? Sorry? Any artists you follow quite a bit on, on Spotify? Uh, I do follow a lot of artists, yeah, but uh, if I have to tell you genre of music that I'm following, rock, soft rocks, and definitely Bollywood has to be there, you know, pop songs and all that. So I'm I'm a fan of music. So any new artists, I would just follow them. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. Okay. So, uh, Ponchi, because we are in the time we are in right now, right, uh, we are all in our own virtual bubbles. What, what is the biggest leadership challenge that you're going through right now? Well, I think uh, today um, uh, the biggest challenge, I can speak from the woman leadership. I think the um, a lot of times what I've experienced in my own experience before, especially a lot of times if there is a room full of men, uh, often your voice would be suppressed uh, because just because you're a woman there. Um, I think that's, that's, that's a problem with the mentality, you know, um, mentality of the people here. Uh, but I think once that doesn't happen quite quite often within the organizations because you have proven yourself, you have, um, you know, um, people know you, so, and they don't try to suppress your voice. But if you go outside to meet your clients or, you know, um, in any other host shows or something like that, you know, a lot of times your voice would be suppressed and I think that's when more, it's more important for us to have women empowerment, you know, give reason for a woman, uh, give a voice to women. Um, that's why I think uh, it's just not people preaching, I feel like people also within their organizations or in a different, uh, in many different ways, people also practice that in reality uh, and respect women and give them a voice and really their opinion matters. So I think that's very much necessary. I think. Today, if I have to talk about the challenge, I think definitely that's, and in the coming generations, uh, girls like me who would be like, you know, senior positions in an, within an organizations or being a leadership profile, I think I expect the same from um, the organizations they would be in to respect them, to give them a voice and to, you know, really consider their opinion. So, yeah. It's an interesting point you raise up, especially about uh, a, a lot of the, the opinions not being considered because they're either women or or they are too young as professionals. Uh, what can organizations do better to make opinions be heard better? Or at least, what, what are you doing in this case at Body Shop? You know, it, it, actively doing towards you know helping your your teammates understand that hey, there is an inclusiveness, uh, you know, in this structure. Well, I think uh, to begin with, uh, like I mentioned before, a body shop, uh, even culturally, uh, in terms of the values, and they are very like, uh, I would say it's a very idle company, you know, uh, in a literally idle terms, it's a very idle company. And I feel uh, um, it is not the same situation in body shop, because if we have to see it today, in Body Shop Indonesia, especially, I think 
percent of the workforce should be women there, uh, and they believe in women empowerment. Um, so they they just not preach it, but they actually follow that, right? Uh, even within the team in my organized in, within my team, right? Um, I would say like you know seventy percent to eighty percent is female there. And I'm really, I feel like good seeing these people, you know, um, very junior, like management interns or just who have graduated the bachelors, they are in the positions of, uh, uh, you know, taking up, building this whole um, strategy for digital channels, right? They keep pick, picking up that journey. So I think with Body Shop, um, uh, it's a slightly different story because they're already in that kind of a culture. But if I have to say for any other organizations that I was previous, previously working with, um, I often, um, you know, uh, make the, make myself more approachable to them, um, give them a voice, put them forward. You know, if there is an opinion coming from the woman, let them present that, uh, let them showcase that. Don't take the credit. You know, so those kind of things uh, which would make them inclusive, right? So yeah. Awesome. Awesome. Wow. Um, and, and kudos to the Bodyship team for actually making such an inclusive structure be more permissible, uh, you know, yeah. as of today. Love to love to aspire to that, right? And again, uh, I think a lot of our, um, our ethos does meet really well uh, between the Body Shop and, of course, at Insider, where we are at right now. Um, so what was your first job like? You know, are there any lessons you take from that and go, yeah, you know what, this is something I would want to build into and, and also develop for the rest of my career? Well, uh, actually, my first job was with Deutsche Bank. That was a banking sector. Uh, but that was just an internship, so I would never really call my learning first experience as a first job, but because it was more like, you know, day to day, monotonous life, doing the same routine, same tasks, nothing much. Uh, but in literal terms, where I actually learned about the corporate life or actually learned about the business was my first company, which was Home Shop 18. Uh, it's a it's a e-commerce industry, but back then 12, 11 years when e-commerce was you know, pretty much a new concept. Nobody even knew what it was e-commerce, right? Um, so yeah, so, and it was a part of TV Network 18. So we had a home shopping channel and you know, Home Shop 18 was the online part of it. Uh, I joined as a management trainee there and then I was soon promoted as an assistant category manager. So that was my first company. And I, to be honest, I really learned a lot there. And my goal was to absorb as much as I can. Like, you know, don't look left and right, just keep questioning, just keep questioning people. I even used to go and like, you know, insist people and sit behind them to make me teach things, you know, like how did this happen? How, how these numbers came from, or how, you know, how this profitability is calculated and all of that. So I, I just, my mission was to learn as much as I can. But also I worked with amazing leaders there. Uh, my uh, my um, super boss was a female uh, um, boss, and I, I really had learned a lot from her. Um, and the great leadership, you even learned more, right? So, uh, but I think uh, one of the takeaway from that company, uh, from my first job was to, like I mentioned uh, before, right? Um, a lot of times actually, um, you know, you have to fake it till you make it, you know? <laughs> so I really believe in that thing, you know? Uh, uh, um, because you to move up the ladder, sometimes you have to know the things, but you exactly, um, you, you don't have to go into very granularity because a lot of times you have to be visionary, you know? Like you have to vision what's the idea you need, but you don't have to go into the technicality. You don't have to go into the granularity. So you, you can portray an idea, you can just fake it when, until you make it, you know, like, you know, think about that later, how you're going to make that idea uh, into a real concept, you know, but, uh, you know, if you have an idea, just go ahead with the idea and then figure out how you can make that idea, um, build the idea into a concept. So um, that's, a, that's, that's a very interesting thing as we I learned, uh, in fact, from my leaders, because a lot of times, you know, e-commerce industry was a very dynamic industry. And uh, a lot of times it's it's about innovation. It's about creating ideas. It's about how creative you can go with an idea. Let's just say, for example, I'm just going to open a trial showroom in the in the city of Mumbai. That's really yeah. an idea, you know. Actually, in the concept, nobody knows it's going to work out or not, right? 
uh, but you know every every great like people say every great uh, um, you know business comes from the smallest idea so it's like that you know e-commerce is like that um, so if it's a room house of people I think everyone should be asked give me an idea and then just figure out what idea can actually work out so yeah I think um, yeah so I think you need to be thinking out of the box you need to be more creative um, the more creative you are I think it's the best thing to be in this dynamic industries like e-commerce one of them would be the right um, skills for you yeah hey we're the greatest uh you know businessmen and visionaries of our time steve jobs basically you know pulled a smartphone out of imagination right there was no data on smartphone usage there was no data on on a smart screen usage as well uh you know if, all the popular beliefs at that point in time went for Blackberries, Motorola's, Siemens kind of mobiles, all of which, you know, uh, failed to recognize that there was another opportunity with, with a smartphone or the development of a smartphone to a smart computer in your pockets. Uh, no, brilliantly said. But by the way, my, my guilty passion, and this is something uh, that started off from India as well, and I think you, you might have been playing a role in there, uh, was to actually buy a lot of um, home appliances from TV shopping networks. Uh, I remember as a young kid uh, looking at um, Super Slicer. Uh, back in the day, it was three ninety nine. I was like, "Yes, yeah. this must be the thing I should buy." You know, I I save money towards going. I want to have you know well cut, interestingly cut salads to to French fries at home. Uh, but no, <laughs> that was like, it's not. Yeah. yeah, that was like twenty four hours nonstop. We would go on pro podcasting that uh, that product, right? So I think every Indian family has had one of that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yes. No. Thank you. You you brought some you know interesting memories back. <laughs> um, what are your hopes for the future? You know, looking at the time we are in right now, this is a unique time. You know, there are a number of things that compound together at this point in time. So, what what is your hope for the future? Well, I think um, might be my you can call it my hope or my wish for the future is to have. Uh, um, world where the violence is not the um, solution to resolve conflict. You know, it really saddens me, it like, really disappoints me to see what's happening in the world around today, you know. Um, you know, I think each country is investing so much in violence and building your own arms and ammunitions. I think if you can just, you know, escape that and use that tax revenue money to, you know, uh, um, economically help your country uh, infrastructure could be your um, state art you know um, invest on cultural stuff and like that so i think today for every country the violence um, is the you know solution to resolve every conflict i think i just wish for a world where that's none of those things happens you know and especially i think it really saddens me to see what's happening with also with the religion thing right and it's, it goes to a more deeper discussion so i don't want to discuss about that but i think religion was really meant to unite the mankind but it's it's leading to divisions and i i really don't hope for that because i i, I don't even think there would be a world without religions but if i can wish <laughs> there should be a world where there's no religions and everybody thinks each other that we belong to the same species I mean, just human beings at the end of the day, right? We're born with the same chromosomes, the same number of bones and everything. Uh, it doesn't make us any different based on our religion, or so which country we belong to, or either I'm white or I'm black or stuff like that. So, yeah, I think it's just a far-fetched wish, but, wish, but uh, I really hope for that. Yeah. May understanding and peace fill our lands and the hearts of the people. Yes, uh, from, from your lips to God's ears, uh, Ponchi, and thank you so much for sharing that. Uh, last question, as we are about to come to a close of this amazing interview, and I'm really enjoying the conversation here, you bring a lot, of, lot more ideas, thoughts, and also memories back. Uh, what was one of your proudest moments in your life? Really, whenever someone asks me what's your proudest moment, I really have to think hard. What's my proudest moment? Because I really never had a proudest moment in my life, you know. <laughs> and it's so disappointing. <laughs> because I think I often try to look into a different, in a different perspective, you know. Like, uh, everything that has happened to my life, I'm so grateful about it. 
um, even the first job I got, you know, uh, I managed to score my jobs, not in the placement which came to the my university, but I managed to score it myself. Uh, I went uh, went knocking each and every door and managed to get the job. And I, I was in the right place at the right time because e-commerce was just starting in the beginning of the era, right? I mean, beginning era of e-commerce. Uh, I was the right place, but I'm really grateful. I would never say that I was, I, that's my proudest moment because I, if I reflect back, uh, I don't think I was really proud, but I was really grateful. And even where I am today, I'm really grateful about that. I'm grateful that I have, um, such a happy family. My family is, you know, uh, well to do. I'm grateful about that. Everything in life, I'm just grateful about that. There is um, no proud moment in my life, and I cannot pick a situation. I say, oh, I'm just really proud about the situation or it accomplishments or achievements in my life. Yeah. Having a happy, healthy life, I think, is one of the best accomplishments that anyone should be proud of. And, you know, listening to all of this, uh, Ponchi, I think you are definitely having and living a very happy, healthy life, uh, you know, both in your career, but also with your loved ones uh, at home and abroad. Right, yeah. yeah, happy awesome. mind, happy life, healthy life. Right. <laughs> Thank you. Ponchi, it was an honor. It was a pleasure to have you today as our guest at, at BTT. And I hope to, to have our continued con uh, conversation after the show as well. Sure. Thank you so much. Thanks for having me, Steve. Great talking to you. Cheers. Hey, guys, for everyone who's watching today, uh, loved having you. Please do tune back in every Thursday, 10 a.m. CET, 5 p.m. Singapore time. Uh, you know, again, if you'd like to be a guest on our show, if you want to be, uh, uh, you know, associated with the show in any way, drop us a comment in our YouTube link below or, of course, DM us directly on LinkedIn. Till then, stay safe, stay healthy.